Now let's start talking about the motivating example, the shift of differentiable functions. We consider differentiable functions on the differentiable fun manifold x. The shift of differentiable functions on x is the data of all differentiable functions on open subsets on x. For any open subset u, we let O of u to denote the ring of smooth functions on u. We know that there are some natural properties associated to those rings of functions. First, restriction map. If open subset U is containing the open subset V, there should be a restriction map from the ring uh, of smooth functions uh, O of V to O of U. And second, those restriction maps should satisfy a law of composition if there are three open subsets, u containing v and v containing w, then the following, oops, the following diagram should commute. And third, uh, it should satisfy an identity axiom. If if f1 and f2 are both in the ring O of u, where u is a union of open subsets u sub i. And furthermore, the restriction of f1 from u to u sub i is equal to the restriction of F2 from U to U sub i for any i. Then we should expect F1 and F2 are equal on this uh, open subset U. And finally, there should be a glueability axiom. Again, if open subset U is a union of open subsets U sub i, and F sub i is contained in the ring O of U sub i, satisfying that the restriction of F sub i from U sub i to U sub i in section U sub j is equal to the restriction from u sub i u sub j to u sub i intersection u sub j of f j for any two indices i and j. Then we should expect that there is there is some f contained in the ring of smooth functions on u such that its rest restriction on each u sub i is exactly the function uh, we have taken as a beginning. Those three properties are clearly true in the theory of smooth manifold, and we will soon formalize those properties in the notion of a sheaf in a more abstract setting. The ring of smooth functions on an open subset U is too big. We want to reduce it to a smaller subset. To this end, 
we introduce the notion of the germ of a smooth function. The germ of a smooth function on a, at a point P in X are objects of the following form. We look at all the pairs F and open subset U such that U contains the point P and F is a smooth function in the ring O of U and there's some equivalence relation. The equivalence relation is given in the following way. We say the pair FU is equivalent to the pair GV if there is some open subset W containing P and is containing U intersection V such that the restriction of f on w is equal to the restriction of g on w. We call this set of germs the stalk at p and denoted by uh, the notation O sub p. The stalk at p has a ring structure. For every two equivalence classes, we take the sum, and sum or product, uh, as the sum or product of their representatives uh, in their communal domain, and you can easily verify that this definition uh, is really well defined. If the open subset U contains a point P, then We have a map from the ring of open subset ring of functions on open subset U to the stock at P given by sending a function to the equivalence class F is living in. From here we can see a way of interpretation of a stock as co-limit. Here, we need to recall the exercise 1.4.c. We take an index category, a script I sub p. The objects in this category are all open subsets of x containing p. And the morphisms between uh, those objects are just inclusions if one is contained in another. We define a factor from this uh, category i sub p uh, to the category of sets by sending each open subset u to the ring of smooth function o of u. Now, by exercise 1.4.c, we can see that the co limit. Of O sub O of U with respect to this functor will be the disjoint union of all of O of U's and the equivalence relation given by the pair F of U equivalent to G of v, G comma V if and only if there exists a W containing P and is contained in U intersection V such that the restriction of F to W is equal to the restriction of G to W. So now by the definition of stocks, we see this is precisely the definition of a stock at P. So we are done. In fact, uh, as a ring, the stock also P is a local ring. 
By local ring, we mean a ring with only one maximal ideal. To see this, we consider MP consists of all the germs that vanishes at P. Clearly, M sub P is an ideal. And we can check that this ideal is maximal by showing that the quotient ring is actually a field. To this end, we consider the short exact sequence consisting of M sub P, O sub P, and R. Where the second map is, a, is an illusion, and the third map uh, is an evaluation map sending a function, the function in the germ to its value at p. So it follows immediately that, that O sub p modulo m sub p is isomorphic to r which is a field. So MP is a maximal ideal. Now let's prove that M sub P is actually the only maximal ideal of O sub P. First we notice that the multiplicative identity of the ring O sub p is actually the equivalence class of the constant function 1 on the manifold x. This term actually contains all the locally constant 1 function at p. For any, for any equivalence class or term uh, f comma u that is not in M sub P. We know by definition F of P is non zero. By, by the continuity of F, F is, is non zero in a in the neighborhood of P. Without loss of generality, we assume this neighborhood to be just just the open subset U as in the representative of this equivalence class. This germ is actually invertible in the stock because because the product one over f comma u and uh, f comma u is equal to the equivalence class of of functions that are locally constant at constant one at p. This shows f u is invertible. This argument actually shows that m sub p consists of all the non-invertible elements in the stock o sub p. So therefore, m sub p is the only maximal ideal of o sub p. So o sub p is a local ring. From the discussion above, we see that we can identify the value of a function or a germ at a point with the element of, a, of a, the local ring modulo the maximal ideal. And this, no, this notion will be later formalized in the notion of a locally ring spaces.